Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose and today we're going to talk about The Good Place. Now, before I go into summer analysis of the series, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. Now, this series draws upon the play No Exit written by John Paul Sartre and it's very fascinating how it keeps the identity of um, one of the main ideas of No Exit, which is hell is other people. And um, in the play, No Exit, what we basically get is that um, three people are thrown into hell and they, be they basically become each other's tormentors. They're thrown into this room and they have to torture each other, not with like devices or tools or anything like that. Um, it's just of the fact that they're in this room together, they don't like each other. Um, and the fact that they exist in this room together is just torment enough. And The Good Place is pretty much the same thing where these four humans die on Earth. They get thrown into hell and this demon by the name of Michael um, pretty much tells them that they're in heaven, but they're not. Um, and they get tortured. They, they get tortured by each other because of the fact that the way that they exist with each other um, becomes their worst nightmares. Now, it's very fascinating how The Good Place really brings philosophy to life or just brings philosophy to the screen because we see um, a lot of philosophical ideas being used um, in The Good Place. And, you know, the series is not one of those series that become a 10 season series where after like the third season, it just you're just tired of it. Um, the series just really maintains its um, identity, um, you know, and it's, it's very funny at times. It really keeps, it really keeps up with, yeah, it keeps up with, with the entertainment. It makes you laugh, but it, it just sticks to the philosophy. Um, one example of this is how it talks about the Charlie problem. Um, and, you know, Chitty is, is one of the characters in The Good Place, and he's trying to teach Michael about moral philosophy, and Michael just makes it real. He puts some on a Charlie with Eleanor and, and himself, and they're on this Charlie, and Chitty ends up running over a bunch of people when he was just, tr just trying to teach Michael um, about the Charlie problem, and Michael makes it real. Um, and so... It, it Yes, that teaches you about the trolley problem. At the same time, it really shows you that when you have to make the decision right away, I mean, we can sit here and talk about philosophy, but when you're faced those decisions um, while they're happening, it's much more um, difficult um, to follow the rules of philosophy when you are in those decisions. But the thing is, like, the, the series really builds on that and show you how people can change um, and how people can be better. And that's one of the things that it doesn't take from um, No Exit. Because No Exit, it's not... There's no redemption. The characters are not redeem, redeeming themselves. They're not um, becoming better. It's just they're stuck in this hot room in hell. And they're just torturing each other. Now, um, The Good Place, it starts like that. Uh, the first season is about them being stuck in a place where they don't belong. Well, they they... Eleanor thought that she didn't belong. The, the, the others thought that they did belong, but slowly they all realize that they're in hell uh, and that it's not fair the way that the system is built against um, for them because we learned in the series that um, no one has gone into heaven for 521 years. Um, and that's something that's tough to, to take because it's like a system that within the series is presented to us that it's pretty much a system that you can't win. No matter what you do, you can never get enough points to make it into heaven. Um, and, 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 you know, the series doesn't build on any type of religion. Uh, we don't even, there's never um, a God that we see within the series. It's all um, these powerful creatures um, and then there's this like universal judge, which is not a God, but she's like a, a judge. Um, and she decides, you know, she makes decisions between the good place and the bad place, um, which is, you know, just fascinating on its own right. So th the series is just, for me, the reason why I think it's fascinating, the reason why I think it's interesting is just because of the fact that how you see the characters change. Um, Jason is, is really interesting because at the, uh, beginning of the series he's like this this individual who's throwing um 
bombs or he's throwing things to explode. He's exploding things left and right, basically. And by the end of the series, even though he was pretending to be a monk, he becomes a monk by the end of the series because he spends a thousand years in a forest waiting for Janet to come back so that he can give her a necklace. So we see these characters change. We see these characters literally change the afterlife. And the series the entire time, just like how a lot of a lot of philosophers make us think about our reality, it kind of leaves us with more questions because by the end of the series, the main characters, they make it into heaven, but then there's a problem with heaven because, you know, heaven gives you the chance to do everything that you can do, everything that you want to do. Uh, but then the problem that they face in the series is that at some point you get tired and, and it gets monotonous to keep doing the same thing over and over again. And then there's a door that they can go through and then stop existing. And then that just... For them, it fixed the problem, but for us, who's watching it, it kind of just puts us back right where we started because, you know, since the dawn of time, human beings, we've been thinking about what's next after Earth. Um, so, series, very interesting. Um, it gives you a twist on a lot of things, and it really makes you think about, um, like, in terms of analyzing it, things of, in terms of, like, seeing what's, what's more, what's more to the series is how... Um, when you first watch the first two episodes of the first season, um, it's kind of like everybody's good there, but Eleanor is the only bad person there. But the thing is, like, you slowly realize that you have to really look underneath the surface to see what's going on. And it's the same thing with philosophy. Philosophy, when you first look at it, it can be hard to grasp, but the more you watch the show and the more you watch what these characters go through, you kind of understand more philosophy better. Um, you see them come to life. You see them being actually practiced. Um, and that's all fascinating. And, you know, it's the first time you can see a show that holds these philosophy ideas and, and just builds upon them. Um, you know, Usually it's like the first it's like the first few episodes you you get the concept you would get that hell is over people but then it just goes away from that um, but the good place keeps that going you see the characters change um, and you see and it's very fascinating how they look at the the afterlife or the underworld I still don't understand what a Jeremy Bear me is but I guess it's a, a time and stuff I guess um, but. Again, the, the, for me, what's really interesting about this series, uh, the main idea is that hell's over people. They keep that going to a certain extent until they, you know, make the characters become like pretty much a family, basically. Um, so, you know, very interesting series. Um, and that's pretty much all I have to say about it. Please remember to give a like, subscribe, and or comment. And I'll see you guys in the next 